I love the Brontes. Jane Eyre and Wuthering Heights are two of my favourite novels of all time. Wuthering Heights especially. This is my second favourite classic novel after Frankenstein, easily. I love Wuthering Heights and Jane Eyre is also an obvious and beloved classic. But until now, I, like so many other people, hadn't read Anne Bronte. Of the three sisters, she is the youngest and she's often seen as kind of the underdog. If you talk to people who've read Jane Eyre and Wuthering Heights, there's kind of a 50-50 chance that they've either, like me, never read Anne Bronte, never given her a chance because she's not as famous, or they'll say that she's incredible, she's amazing, her books are the best of all the Bronte books and you need to give her a try. A few weeks ago, I went on a bookshop tour around central London with a bunch of other booktubers and I let slip while we were walking from one shop to another that I'd never read Anne Bronte and I was almost forced to buy this when I went to a bookshop. So I did, I went into the London Review bookshop and I picked this up and I just read it. And it's amazing. It's absolutely fantastic. Compared to Jane Eyre and Wuthering Heights, this is a fantastically powerful and feminist novel. So feminist, so fantastic, and so powerfully dramatic. By the way, there is a guy mowing a lawn just doing his thing outside. I don't know if you can hear it, but I'm gonna keep filming and I really hope it's not too annoying or too distracting for you. So the wonderful thing about gothic and romantic fiction of the 19th century and the Brontes kind of exemplify this more than so many other authors is the sheer amount of drama. There is an exaggeration to the characters found in Bronte books. They are monstrous people, they are cruel people, they are deceptive and un kind, and they speak in the most absurd, over-the-top, melodramatic ways, and I love all of it. The melodrama of Wuthering Heights is absolutely absurd. These are the most cruel and awful people who are all smushed into a small space together and hating each other and killing each other with misery. And I love every moment of it. That is also very much the case here, at least for a lot of this book, but again, it has a very feminist twist. I knew nothing about The Tenant of Wildfell Hall before I read it, and there are a lot of twists and turns in this book that I really didn't expect. And so in case you've never read it, I am not gonna be spoiling things here. So The Tenant of Wildfell Hall is separated into three acts, and it is kind of epistolary. The first act is told from the perspective of a man called Gilbert Markham. He's writing a letter to a friend of his to tell him a long story about something that happened to him once. And so that story is kind of being expressed as a series of letters. And so the book's first act is told from Gilbert's perspective. He's a farmer living in a small community somewhere in the north of England in the early 1800s. He lives with his family. He has a busybody mother, a gossiping sister, and a brother that he often fights with. And just recently, a young woman has moved into a local house. This house is ramshackle, it is derelict, and it's an old Gothic manor house. This woman is called Helen Graham, and so she is the titular tenant of Wildfell Hall. She's moved in there, she's got a five-year-old son, and she's making her living as a painter. She paints beautiful things, and she sends her paintings to London to be sold. This is the first hint of intense feminism in this book, because this is a woman living alone with her child, whom she is raising by herself, and she's making her living off of painting. She is an artist, she is effectively a business owner, someone who is self-employed, and she's making it work, and she's living her life. This is unusual, this is strange, this is exciting, and something to be very proud of. And when I was doing some research about this book, it's things like that that mark this as one of the first feminist novels ever. And that's insane. That's amazing. I'm annoyed that I never learned this for myself and it took until now for me to read this. Now, Anne Bronte didn't like people. She was quite famous for disliking society. And that is expressed through the fact that this small community of people don't trust Helen Graham, they don't like her, and they gossip about her. All around the village, all around their area, people are gossiping about her, making up stories about her, trading those stories like they're a currency. And Gilbert Markham doesn't like this. He's been kind of casually courting this woman called Eliza, who is the daughter of the local vicar. But now he's seen Helen Graham and he is steadily falling in love with her. He's spending more and more time with her. He really gets on with her five-year-old son and he's really interested in her. He thinks he wants to profess his love to her. 
But then something happens that makes him start to believe that the rumors, that all of the gossip, all the horrible things that people are saying about Helen Graham might be true, or at least might be inspired by truth. Suddenly he doesn't know what to think anymore. And that's when act two begins, when Helen Graham hands Gilbert her journal. This is a journal that marks her life from about six or seven years prior to the events of the book so far, and so we learn her backstory. When we meet Helen, she's about 25 years old, and her journal begins at around the age of 18. She hands him this journal, and he goes home and reads it, and the journal makes up act two. So then we switch perspectives, and from here we learn about Helen's life. We learn about her youth, we learn about where she grew up and what her family was like, and eventually we will learn why she left all of that. And because her son is five, and this story begins when she's 18, we know that we are going to learn about her son's father, her son's birth. We're going to get all of this context about who Helen used to be, how her son came to be, and what caused her to flee to this remote community where she lives in a derelict house and paints pictures. And I'm not gonna spoil any of it because this is absolutely worth experiencing for yourself. Once again, the feminism of it all is strong and powerful and I'm so proud of it. It's gorgeously well explored. Helen Graham does a lot of daring things. She makes a lot of mistakes. She's very naive when act two starts. And then she has to grow up very quickly. She's forced by society to grow and learn and make difficult decisions. And it's absolutely beautiful. And the feminist aspects aside, returning to the melodrama, this book is also really, really funny. I would argue that this book is in some ways the most accessible Bronte novel. Wuthering Heights is wonderfully inaccessible. People hate Wuthering Heights. I've talked about this in other videos because that book is aggressively depressing. Every single character in that book is a depraved and cruel human being and they all treat each other like shit. Whereas the tenant of Wildfell Hall isn't like that. The characters are mean, a lot of them, in terms of the way that they gossip and treat Helen like an outsider, but they're so funny in the way that they do this, and it really reminded me of Jane Austen. There is a wit to the writing here that is so Jane Austen, so Charles Dickens. The ways in which Austen and Dickens both wrote unlikable characters in a very caricatured and hilarious ways. Characters that you enjoy hating because the ways in which they talk and communicate and express themselves are so fucking funny. That was the beauty and the wit of Jane Austen is that she would make you enjoy disliking characters because they were so fun to hate. I've recently been watching Sex and the City for the first time, and Carrie is the most unlikable protagonist in the whole wide world. She's a horrible, awful person, and I love watching her. I love hating her. It's fun to do that. And all of that is captured in The Tenant of Wildfell Hall better than in any Austen novel, in my opinion. I prefer the Brontes to Austen, and this exemplifies why, because this is kind of an Austen-esque book that handles unlikable characters in an even more fun and audacious and ridiculous way. It's a truly and shockingly hilarious book. Shocking because I didn't know it was gonna be so funny. The Tenant of Wildfell Hall is sometimes laugh out loud hilarious in terms of the ways that the characters interact with each other. It's like a soap opera. In this explosive way, these characters are larger than life caricatures and you love to just watch them hate on each other. And in the middle of it all, you've got Gilbert and Helen who are a lot more grounded and Helen is quite reclusive and enigmatic and charming. And the people around them are just bloody awful. As an example of the ridiculous melodrama, just listen to this bit from the end of chapter four where Gilbert is talking to his mother and his mother says, what you see in her, I don't know. It isn't only the want of money that I think about, nothing of the kind, but there's neither beauty, nor cleverness, nor goodness, nor anything else that's desirable. If you knew your own value as I do, you wouldn't dream of it. Do wait a while and see. If you bind yourself to her, you'll repent it all your lifetime. When you look round you and see how many better there are, take my word for it, you will. Well, mother, do be quiet. I hate to be lectured. I'm not going to marry yet, I tell you, but dear me, mayn't I enjoy myself at all? Mayn't. The tenant of Wildfell Hall uses the contraction mayn't. I've never heard that in my life. 
10 out of 10 perfect book. So there you go. That That's the beauty of this book, is that it is a wonderfully feminist book, and not only the most feminist, but maybe the only feminist Bronte novel that I've read so far. Just a wonderfully, aggressively, proudly feminist novel from the early 1800s, and a wonderful piece of melodrama a soap opera, a laugh out loud collection of conversations and events that are hilariously shocking and sometimes frightening and I struggle to believe what was happening. There's a bit early on where Gilbert punches a man who's on a horse and the guy falls off his horse and Gilbert wonders if he's killed him or not. Like that, that's... <laughs> I love this book to pieces. I, I, I absolutely do. I'm so glad I was encouraged aggressively to buy and read The Tenant of Wildfell Hall. If you've never read Anne Bronte, but you loved Wuthering Heights or Jane Eyre, please, please check out The Tenant of Wildfell Hall. This novel is amazing. Wonderfully aggressively feminist and brilliant, absurd melodrama. Oh, love it. Absolutely love this to pieces. Go read it. Join my Patreon if you'd like to support me, and subscribe for books.